We're trying to come up with stuff for an intro to the podcast, and it's just rot, really. Rot, really? Rot, really? <laughs> it's rot, really working, Raggy. Rot, really. It's not really working, is it? <laughs> Maybe we should just get going with the podcast. Maybe you should make a comment about my hair. Maybe that would be better. Well, I said I shouldn't make a comment about your hair because that sounds really well, mean. just go ahead, do it. It's kind of got its own little design today. Yeah, it's got a little swirl there, doesn't it? Must have been really windy outside. Well, something like that. Well, it's just a good thing that we do podcasts and not videos, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode eight of the Knowing God podcast for kids. I am Erin. And I am Bob. And this is going to be the last part of a series we have been doing on the armor of God. And we have spent three episodes so far talking about the belt, the breastplate, the shoes, and the helmet. And today we are going to talk about the shield and the sword. In Ephesians 6.16, it says, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now, a flaming arrow was an actual weapon that was used by Roman soldiers. And those were the soldiers from the Bible times. They would use a bow and they would light the end of the arrow on fire and they would shoot it at their enemy. And whatever these arrows hit, it would catch on fire. And in Ephesians, it says that this is what Satan does to us. He shoots flaming arrows at us. This is another way to describe how Satan battles with us in our mind. So how can we stop these flaming arrows from Satan? God has given us a special shield. The soldiers during the Bible times also had shields, and sometimes they would make what was called a shield wall. A bunch of soldiers would line up side by side with their shoulders touching each other, and they would hold up these huge shields. They would hold them up out in front of them. It looked like a big, long wall of shields, which is why they called it a shield wall. The shield walls were able to block the flaming arrows that their enemy was shooting at them. So how can we use our shield that God has given us? Well, it's called the shield of faith because we use our shield by having faith. We can stop Satan with our faith. Let's talk about faith for a minute. Everyone uses some kind of faith every day. If someone goes to the doctor, they have faith that the doctor can make them feel better. Uh, If someone goes to a restaurant, they have faith that the chef will cook food that won't make them sick. If a person has a job and they work all week long, they have faith that they're going to get paid at the end of the week on payday. But what we're talking about with the shield of faith is a special kind of faith. Bob, you're sitting in a chair right now. Yes. And before you sat down, you had to have the faith that that chair would hold you up. (laughs) If you didn't have faith in that chair and you thought it would break, you wouldn't have sat down in it because you, yeah, w- right. you wouldn't have wanted to crash down to the floor. You would have found another chair instead. So you had faith in that chair when you sat down. But what if that chair was actually made out of cardboard? Oh, boy. And you sat down in it. What would happen? It probably wouldn't be good <laughs> unless it was lots of cardboard. <laughs> So it's important what or who we're putting our faith in. Our faith is only as good as whatever we're putting our faith in. If we put our faith in a cardboard chair, our faith won't do much for us. Mm -hmm. In order to use our shield of faith, we must put our faith in the right place. We must put our faith in Jesus and we must have faith in what the Bible says. Faith is how we're saved from sin. It's how we're healed. It's how we receive all the promises that God gives us in the Bible, and faith is how we defeat Satan. So how do we get this faith? It says in Romans ten seventeen that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we get our faith by hearing God's word, the Bible. Uh, Jesus says it only takes a little bit of faith the size of a mustard seed. But the problem is that many times people also have doubt. So let's look at a story in Matthew 17. This is where a man came up to Jesus and his son was sick and had really bad seizures and was possessed by a demon. Those seizures were so bad that he would foam at the mouth and sometimes fall in the fire. The father of this boy told Jesus, 
that he had brought his sick son to Jesus' disciples, but they could not heal the boy. So the Bible says Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and the boy was completely healed within that hour. The disciples were confused and asked Jesus why they couldn't cast out the demon. And this is when Jesus told them that you only need faith the size of a mustard seed. He said, if you do have this faith, then nothing will be impossible for you. But the disciples were confused because they knew they had faith to get rid of the demon. They'd done it before. But the problem was the disciples also had doubt. Now, doubt is the opposite of faith. And when you have doubt, it makes your faith not work. So here's an example. Let's say you see a long, large rope laying on the ground and you pick it up and you start pulling it towards you. You are able to pull that rope towards you with no problem. But what if while you're pulling on this rope, another person comes and starts pulling on the opposite end of the rope in the other direction? Now it's like you're playing tug of war and you can't make the rope move in your direction anymore because someone's pulling it on the other end. This is kind of what doubt does to our faith. You can have faith and it's like you're pulling on that rope and making it come towards you with no problem. But when you have doubt, doubt starts pulling on the opposite direction and it stops your faith. We have to get rid of our doubt in order for our faith to work. And we have to get rid of our doubt in order to be able to use our shield of faith. We started this Armor of God series with a story about a young man named Otto Walsh. Otto was drafted into the army during World War II. And so let's talk a little bit more about the story about Otto. Okay. While Otto was in the military and visiting uh, other countries, he saw a lot of children without homes. And these kids didn't have parents and they needed lots of help. Otto started praying about these kids a lot. And eventually, he decided when he gets out of the army, he wants to visit these children and help them. And he wants to tell them about Jesus. Well, after Otto decided to do this, he started to get thoughts in his head. And these thoughts were telling him that, Otto, you're not good enough. You've done too many bad things in your life. Lots of other people would do a better job than you. And you're just, you're not good enough to do it. But Otto had also spent a lot of time while he was in the army, reading the Bible. And he knew that in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says when we believe in Jesus, we become the righteousness of God. So Otto also knew that these thoughts about him not being good enough to tell people about Jesus, they're not from God because they do not match what the Bible says. So Otto memorizes this verse in 2 Corinthians about him being the righteousness of God. And one way he memorizes it is by speaking that verse out loud over and over again. And when he does that, he gets God's word into his heart because he's hearing God's word out loud as he speaks it. And so it's entering his heart. And remember, faith comes by hearing. And so when he hears that and is memorizing it, he's getting it into his heart. So now Otto has faith in And he has God's word in his heart. And now he's ready to use his shield to stop those thoughts that Satan was shooting at him. But in Ephesians 6.17, it tells us about another piece of armor. And this piece is actually a weapon. So far, we've been talking about all these pieces of armor that are used for protection. But this piece of armor is our weapon. And it's our sword. And God tells us exactly what this sword is. In Ephesians, it says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now that Greek word that is used for word, when it says word of God, is rhema. And rhema means the spoken word. So we use the sword of the spirit by speaking God's word out loud. So in the case with Otto... He put God's word in his heart and he had faith. Now, not only can he use God's shield with his faith, but he can also fight with God's sword. And he uses a sword by speaking God's word. He can say something like, Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus name. God's word says, I am the righteousness of God. When you speak God's word, you are using God's sword. 
and it is the most powerful weapon in the world. When you use God's sword, the Bible says Satan must run away from you. You can imagine in your mind a soldier holding up his shield for protection at the same time he's fighting with his sword. And this is exactly what we're supposed to do. We should have all our other pieces of armor on, our belt, our breastplate, our shoes, our helmet. But we also have a shield, which we use by faith. And that faith comes by hearing God's word. And at the same time, we fight with our sword by speaking God's word. And we speak that word that's already been put in our heart. And Satan has to run away. This is exactly what Jesus did when he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Satan would say something to Jesus, and Jesus responded every time by saying a verse found in the book of Deuteronomy. Jesus was using the sword against Satan. Jesus could have fought Satan in any way he wanted to, but he chose to use the sword of the Spirit because he knows exactly how powerful it is, and we should choose to use it too. So through all these episodes, with all these pieces of armor, we have said over and over that we have to be prepared. And we have to purposely put these pieces of armor on. And I hope that we have helped you learn how to do that. So if you go to our website at hideandseekministries.com and click on books, you will see the Hidden Treasure Quest series. And in that first book, Knowing God Through Creation, there are several chapters that go into more detail about God's sword. So if you're interested, be sure and check out that book series to learn more about God's sword. Also, while you're at our website, click on podcasts and you can get a free printable worksheet to review what we've talked about today. And be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play Music and Stitcher. Is that all you've got to say? (laughs) And I think that's it. So we will see you next time. Thanks so much for joining us today. So we have these outtakes normally at the beginning of our episodes, and it always seems like I'm making fun of you. That's because it's real life. (laughs) No, we have to tell people that I'm really not that mean. (laughs) You're not mean, but not necessarily anyways.